All right, M.A. Marignon, turn 72. No idea what's going to be happening this turn. Let's see. Oh, yes, Blood 7. Excellent. Uh, Evocation 9, Flames from the Sky, perhaps. Uh, our High Inquisitor claims the Throne of Earth, which is nice. Uh, those Earth Gnomes will be really useful mages for us, and in an area that we don't have under you know great control at this point. Uh, shuffling some mages around, of course. Mind Hunt, finally <laughs> successful on one of these. Huzzah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, definitely a good way to get rid of immortals uh, and also uh, stealthy units particularly. Uh, we're bringing some wolves in somewhere. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is defensive or rather, you know, in a location that we control. Uh, we've seen how that doesn't work out too well. Uh, interesting, a report from one of our locations. That's not good. Yeah, so this is probably Asphodel. Uh, we have a bunch more disease units. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if like uh, it's perhaps just what they can cast like I don't know if they're specifically like considering this angle uh, but the fact that the units stick around kind of feels extra worse because uh, we, we still play we still pay upkeep on them right so we can't really replace them immediately because we're still paying for them now I mean on the other hand they're still alive and we, we still get pretty good use out of them honestly yeah, I mean once they really <laughs> once it's been a few turns and you know they're really messed up uh, then they're combat effectiveness really does drop sharply but you know you probably have three or four you know decent turns of use out of them so it's kind of a plus and minus situation uh but we definitely don't love this right <laughs> like this, this is definitely a downside i think this is the one that uh killed their pretender so you know fair enough uh and i mean we don't know that it's asphodel but it, it's asphodel <laughs> Uh, casting some other spells, you know, standard stuff. Uh, we have a magic phase. This is our magic phase. This is probably our golem uh, with the, the harmonica. And yeah, he dropped on some stuff from Marignon. Uh, they can do foul vapors, I think, but it's a lot harder. Um, or sorry, from Aryu. Uh, it's a lot harder for Aryu to do foul vapors uh, than their early age uh, equivalent. So that's in the good news department because, uh, yeah, we don't have a ton of nature mages. This is looking like it's going to work out pretty well. Uh, there are some thugs here, like, but I think they've got like Vine Shield and Frostbrand, which isn't going to be fantastic against a golem. They're not set to advance and cast spells, and it doesn't really look like they're doing flight or anything so it's probably not fully scripted yet <laughs> always dangerous uh to be moving armies out not fully scripted uh i i do you know just i'm in a couple games uh with this player and like uh, they're just really busy right now i think so i my heart goes out to them but uh not enough to stop us from dropping horror harmonica golems on their units <laughs> They did start this, uh, which, again, we, we thank them for since they, they kept our host in the game after we uh, provided the fourth knife. Uh, so the horrors are probably going to do pretty well at this point. Yeah, some of the some of the commanders hung out there, so there was actually still is some damage. Yeah, horrors don't do well uh, against elemental magic in general. They tend to not have any elemental resistances. Yeah, you see even the Gortide horror there taken out by lightning. Uh, lightning, again, probably your best bet if you pull it off. Uh, so that actually works out for Marignon, kind of. Uh, you know, our golem gets sent home, but, you know, it's kind of like a lot of units ran off, and we didn't kill that much. You know, it's standard, like, kind of uh, horror harmonica results. So the losses aren't that bad, but it really, like, slows them down, uh, which is the main thing that we're looking for there. Uh, still doing some site searching, of course, and then, yeah, we actually found a site, an astral site. That is nice. We, do, we need all the gems at this point. Uh, and our bloods, our uh, blood hunters are doing okay. It looks like Asphodel uh, does get at least a few assassins, which is interesting, because uh, I, I thought most of them cannot assassinate. Huh. Oh, nice. This is a hero. Uh, that's cool. So he's given him uh, both of the Pokemon items, or at least like both of the more common Pokemon items. Kind of surprised that there's no... I guess it's kind of hard for Asphodel to do uh, blood hunting. They do have a little bit of blood, but, you know, I mean, they kill off all their population. So, you know, they're not really going to have any provinces to blood hunt in. Uh, and then, like, they don't they don't have that many blood mages either. Uh, I don't know who this was. That oh, was a mercenary commander, so we got pretty lucky. And he survived a really long time. <laughs> How come, like, whenever my mages get assassinated, I feel like they die immediately, and then some random mercenary commander <laughs> holds out against a hero for a couple rounds? Uh, so anyway, we one of our mercenaries is not going to be storming this turn, which is fine. Uh, and then we have some raids here against Jibalba. 
try to go through these relatively quickly. Let's see, yeah, it's gonna be fire elemental, and we have a couple wolves. What do you bet? I think this works. Let's take a look. Uh, nope, <laughs> it does not work. What's that universe? We have to watch all the battles? Well, if you insist. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we probably just got sniped. Uh, you know, there, was, there were quite a few archers uh, in that province defense, and you, know, you put up body ethereal, 75% chance that a mundane weapon does nothing. There's still a 25% chance that your old dude in a robe uh, eats an arrow and dies, and, well, that's the end of that raiding group. Uh, this is not an old man in a robe, so that's nice. It's a werewolf. Uh, and, you know, as you can see from all the damage, this is one with some questionable kidding. He's got no shield, so it does work out, but only just barely, so that could have gone the other way. I don't, I don't think we've found, like, the perfect werewolf kit. That kit was at least somewhat cheap. Uh, so yeah, that raid works out against pretty minimal, like, eh, standard, 6 six PD, but it is Deer Tribe, so no great feat there, but we'll take the win. Uh, this is one of our many really diseased armies. <laughs> this is the one that was sitting on top of the Well of Pestilence, which I do appreciate. Really good fort placement. Uh, yeah, there's not too much province defense here, and it's pretty awful, so of course our army will roll that over. Uh, that one I really do have faith in. Yeah, no losses, uh, so that's nice. And then let's see, this is a raid against Ariu. Probably a werewolf? Nope, this is not a werewolf. Yeah, a Grandmaster. Uh, one of our heavier raiding groups, this guy we've actually given uh, a lion pelt, right, to kind of help with that arrow sniping problem. It's pretty expensive, though, uh, so it's like trying to do this for all the raiders. Uh, doesn't actually look like there's any PD here, just some retreats, probably from some Wailing Winds shenanigans. Uh, so, yeah, this is going to work out. We didn't need this really heavy raiding group. Uh, but this is close, like, to our territory, so it's like, you know, the closer we are to our territory, I think the, the stronger the raiding groups I want to be using. And then, you know, as we push stuff deeper, it's like, well, it's a good chance that's going to die. Uh, so, send the weaker stuff. I don't know. Oh, okay, this is Shinyama. Some cave somewhere in one of our armies. <laughs> it's looking like we should we should come away with it, I think. Oh, this is the one that's dodging their capital. Yeah, we used gems. That's kind of unfortunate. Uh, I don't think we have a ton of gems from this army. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these dock-headed fellows can be kind of nasty, but again, we have Spirit Sight on the Bless. That really helps us a lot in this situation. Um, and like, yeah, even though this is a strong PD type, and quite a bit of it, like, it's just not going to be able to stand up to an army. Although the gem usage uh, is significant, yeah, so we lose a crossbowman, and we do take out whatever was going on with these foul spawn and this Bakamono Shaman. I don't want to know. Uh, and then we catch a battle between Agartha and Ariu. I have a feeling that we might have to fight Agartha. They seem like a pretty savvy player, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know, they, they own that throne, right? And I think Ariu is, like, studiously avoiding uh, recapturing that throne province from them. You know, just in the hope, perhaps, that, like, diplomatically, uh, you know, they can, Agartha can cover it with her flag, because, like, we're not really fighting Agartha yet. Um, and Agartha hasn't fortified it yet. And, like, obviously, they, they have a bit of an axe to grind against Ariu, so, you know, how much they're going to invest uh, in defending the th that throne, like, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, they just, they seem like a cool player. They seem like the kind of player that wouldn't want to just allow the, the game to end on their watch uh, uncontested, which is unfortunate because uh, they have a lot <laughs> to contest with. I have not really thought at all about how we would beat something like this. Hopefully we will not have to, we may just go somewhere else, right? Like maybe we'll go underwater <laughs> instead of dealing with this if it comes to that. Uh, so we'll see. Anyway, that uh, is a really scary army, and obviously the, the Barbarian PD cannot stop it. Uh, we take some province. I feel like this is an area used territory near our own. Uh, and then there's a battle in Shinoyama. I think this is just a ping. Um, yeah, okay. I, was just, I, was like, I don't think we actually... We're not in place just yet. Surprisingly low amount of province defense, uh, you know, considering how much Shinoyama's been investing, and, and this is their capital. So I don't think Shinoyama gets... Yeah, this doesn't really look like great province defense type. Uh, so, you know, maybe they just recognize that, like, eh, it's not going to be that useful. Uh, no patrolling either, which is significant. So, yeah, we're just kind of interested in what Shinoyama was up to on top of their capital. Uh, and then, of course, Asphodel has a bunch of attacks because, you know, we have not been sitting on them enough, right? We've been diverting most of our forces elsewhere <laughs> to deal with easier opponents, frankly. Uh, no offense to them. This uh, player playing Asphodel is 
one of, if not the best players that I have personally played with. Um, and like, yeah, even though they're getting 4v1, they're doing a good job of like sending out raiding squads. A little light in terms of the uh, leadership, although they, yeah, maybe, I don't know, like Sendar are probably pretty expensive uh, and they need a stealthy commander. Uh, so this is definitely a group we could mind hunt, although I just don't even know if it's worth it. Uh, we only have the one uh, mind hunter currently. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I go back and forth with recruiting the Grandmasters. It would be nice if we had more Astral 3s, but they keep popping out as Fire 4s. They're hideously expensive. Uh, this is some of their chaff, uh, some Ko-Oni. No mage support, it looks like. So, yeah, maybe... I'm not sure how much they have here. The scout report on top of Naba has just been reading, like, the one, uh, the one pan but I find that hard to believe. I don't really trust that, <laughs> so I'm not sure what this means, but certainly there's no mages here. We're not contesting this province. Uh, and then let's see, this is, yeah, another place I don't think we're contesting here either. Uh, and then, yeah, here's a pan, here's a mage, a couple mages. Nice, a white mage uh, to help do some point buffing. Yeah, and some full kit, but fairly competent kit, some death gems, probably for like invulnerability and or soul vortex. Uh, oh, okay, no, this is our army, nice. And uh, Asphodel has correctly identified that we don't really have any uh, super combatant answers here. Uh, we do have two werewolves, but they are configured uh, for raiding. Ooh, actually, yeah, <laughs> luckily our configuration for raiding is kind of questionable, but is gonna be better, not great, but better against uh, like, yeah, something like this. It's gonna be better against this super combatant, uh, but still like there is a lot of, yeah, and then all the bugs and everything. Fine shield will help with the bugs. Um, and we do have regeneration, oh boy. Yeah, we do have troops at least. Yeah, and we, uh, we went berserk. We're gonna get. We're gonna get the point buffer. That is definitely relevant. Uh, the flagellants pretty unlikely to do anything, especially because they're gonna get drained. Uh, nobody here has great magic resistance, and this guy has a vine shield. Uh, so like, yeah, we're pretty much just providing free food. I would say that like flagellants actually are a little harder than most human troops to thug or super combatant into. Because uh, they do deal a good amount of damage. Now, you do have to be careful. We do have uh, four strength on the bless, but still, like, they, they deal quite a bit of damage anyway. Um, so they can actually be kind of dangerous, but, yeah, they don't have very good MR. <laughs> so pretty much, you know, Vine Shield does the trick. Same for our werewolves. So werewolves, not particularly amazing counter thugs. We lose one there. That's unfortunate. Uh, so, like, yeah, Asphodel doing cool stuff. This was a kind of more low commitment effort from us, uh, mostly because I was expecting to get Murdering Wintered, which never happened. Uh, maybe just because we didn't, you know, present a nice enough target, and, you know, maybe they figure that whatever that spell is that they're using to <laughs> disease all our armies is the better option anyway. Uh, so we're 0 for 3 against Asphodel there. Uh, but, you know, we're also just tr trying to contain them, really. Like, we do eventually want to take territory off of them, uh, but we kind of want to finish with Shinyama first, uh, and then we'll push harder against them. Like I said, I really kind of just wanted to take pressure off. I mean, originally, before everyone else <laughs> ended their non-aggression packs, the plan was to go pretty heavy uh, against Asphodel, but once it became apparent that we were going to have to fight a bunch of people anyway, it's like, yeah, it was like, why, why spend all of our effort going against something like this uh so we'll get there eventually like we we may finish out with that last throne we'll see uh, and then this is another army moving forward this is uh the remains of one of shinyama's army and uh yeah i don't think it really had anywhere to, to pull to pull out to uh we did actually have some people stale as well this turn because yeah it's it's summertime right now summertime is not a good time uh to be playing dominions uh i myself and in search of subs at the moment, um, you know, trying to find a sub for something like this. I don't know, I feel bad even asking, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm just looking for a temporary sub, and it's just like, yeah, like, learn all this madness, uh, and then have it pulled away, like, you know, three or four turns later. It hardly seems fair, but, you know, they're, they're at least, I warned them, you know, that it's a temporary sub, so <laughs> we'll see if I actually get one. Uh, but yeah, a lot of people uh, are, are on vacation and such, uh, so if you're going to do your Dominions games and you know, try to do it around winter time uh, unless you know you're around the equator in which case well you'll have to figure that out yourself I barely know how to deal with my own latitude Ooh, we lose a crystal mage that's unfortunate uh, looks like it burned nose probably the witch hunters we definitely burned out part of a communion there so yeah these uh, you know these really small 
Fog Warrior communions have been working pretty well. Uh, and I mean, ultimately, if you use human mages to power them, you only need two mages uh, in order to get the uh, Harbingers to be able to cast Fog Warriors. So, you know, it's fairly cheap and it seems to be somewhat reliable, but, you know, certainly if you can get uh, other communion slaves, that's a little better. I would say that, like, yeah, using witch hunters, like, if you have the gems for it, uh, using the communion matrices is really nice anyway, because you can get it turn one, uh, and then you can just give them, you know, you can just get, find an initiate. Hey, initiate, you want to learn, you want to, you want to learn about air magic? Come over here. Uh, so yeah, we may have to rejigger this a little bit, uh, you know, find a new volunteer, and the Crystal Mage probably just got sniped. Uh, you know, there are some pretty dangerous archers. Like, yeah, anytime you're a human nation and there's really dangerous archers, like, even turn one stuff is no guarantee. Uh, and, you, you know, I've been trying to put um, the Lion Pelts on as many people as possible, but there's just no way that you can gear out all your mages. So you just kind of need to accept that it's cost of doing business. Uh, and then we have another raid against Aryu. Mm, yeah, our Bakamono <laughs> in Dark Skies. That's a little scary. Luckily, the PD investment is really light, and there's it's a pretty crappy type, so I think we come away with this, uh, which probably means that we lose. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it holds. Ooh, I missed that there was an Azure Mage there, so that might have been what did the trick. Uh, it does look like he maybe got the final kill because there were quite a few losses uh, here among the PD. So it's not the end of the world uh, losing our Bakamono. Uh, but the next one that's close, we'll have to watch. <laughs> or maybe the, the next one that I, that I hear, like, this is one. Like, sure, this will work out. I don't know, actually, this who's raising dead. That's not a good sign. Oh, okay, yeah. And this is, you remember when I said we were sending reinforcements uh, <laughs> to deal with the, the Wraith Lords, but we didn't have, you know, full coverage everywhere? Well, it looks like the Wraith Lord went to a location <laughs> that did not have full coverage. So we've, we've seen how this goes, more or less. Uh, yeah, I don't think we need to watch this. Even though we have the body ethereal, you're just not going to be able to take them down. We're never going to be able to make uh, enough forward progress. Oh, actually, you know what? Um... Shinyama either chose to hang out or, you know, they staled so there was no movements. Uh, either way, they... Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, I, just, I, I clearly know nothing about this game. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to have to watch this one. <laughs> I don't know how we came away with this. I feel like we've seen almost exactly this scenario before. And I, I feel like the last time, or maybe times... There were more bodyguards, right? Like, this is kind of a, a more budget, you know, it's like I had, like, three halberdiers hanging out. And I was like, all right, like, sure, we should be able to take some province. So, yeah, fire magic. Did the fire elemental get through? That's probably what it is. Yeah. Like, maybe he misses. No, get some skeletons. Fire elementals are pretty good against skeletons. Uh, and then, yeah, and then advance and cast spells helps a lot. Yeah, incinerate. There was a disintegrate cast, though, from the, um, whatever, the undead fellow. Wraith Lord, if you want to get technical. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. So, this can work out. That is good news. Of course, you know, the Wraith Lord will reform, so we will see him again, but sending him home is a victory. And we retake the province, uh, which is nice. So, let's see. So, definitely going to lose this one, right? Now, now we should win. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, this is just a paladin and his buddies. No gear on this paladin. Uh, you know, I don't know. People, you can maybe thug with paladins, like against really light province defense. I haven't really tried it this game. I, I don't have a lot of faith in it. I feel like if you're going to use a paladin to raid, this is probably the better way to go. Although, yeah, this is the problem with using bodyguards uh, to raid. Your, your commander tends to get out in front of them, uh, unless the bodyguards are faster, maybe? Uh, but these guys are the same speed, so it's yeah, it's pretty difficult. Uh, your commander tends to make contact first, which is pretty dangerous. But, like, a paladin is fairly survivable, as far as human units go, and we're just up against some pretty crappy people. Uh, which means that one of those militia probably got, you know, an exploding DRN? No. <laughs> okay, so we actually come away with that. <laughs> Predicted it correctly. Uh, and then, let's see, this is a raid against Flegra. I think Flegra is is kind of just deciding to, you know, stay at home, which, yeah, totally understand. I feel like that's pretty common, right? It's late in the game, you know, you're, you know you're not going to be able to go with it, like, just set up as nasty a defense as possible and see if you can survive. Uh, this is a province that we failed on before, <laughs> so with with a lich, uh, we sent uh, help, so we should be okay, and we did at least kill a few units last time. Yeah, there's not much in the way of province defense. Those are actually just axe warriors or axemen that uh, 
didn't uh, didn't ever make it home. They retreated from some army. Yeah, and this is our other set of mercenaries attacking Tian Chi, uh, which yeah, again, intriguingly like lower PD commitment on top of a fort. So yeah, maybe Shinayama just feeling that the PD is just not really worth investing in. Because uh, they have invested in a lot of other province defense. Um, and I mean, yeah, it isn't very good PD, <laughs> so probably a wise move. Uh, but still, we locked down the fort for relatively cheap. That is nice. Uh, I was expecting, you know, these guys to die. Now, of course, ooh, we don't really lock down the fort. <laughs> yeah, wait, our Grand Master, he's not a mercenary. Yeah, that was totally planned. Uh, so yeah, didn't really think that one through. If you're going to use mercenaries in an attack against a fort, you probably should include, like, and you're not going to pay for those mercenaries for the following turn, include at least a few other units so you can keep the fort locked down on the off chance that you do manage to capture the province. Uh, and then let's see, this is some fire elemental raid against a decent amount of province defense. And recall the PD commander for Jabalba being a bit on the dangerous side. We also ran into some natural rain, which we don't love. Yeah, and the, <laughs> sometimes the fire elemental, now he's coming back? Like, really? I just really struggle to understand. <laughs> he just goes right past him and is like, whoops. <laughs> uh, so it works out. You know, well, it's just like one militia in particular. <laughs> I guess he was calling them names. Uh, so, you know, who knows? The mysteries of Dominion's pathfinding. Uh, it does look like it worked out for us in the end. Yeah, we didn't even take any losses, but it was a little touch and go there. Uh, so let's see. And then coming close to the end of it here. Let's see. We are probably trying to recapture uh, province or no. This looks like maybe we're just trying to take it. Um, and this is not looking like it's going to work out for us. Uh, let's see, what kit do you have? Oh, actually, hold on. We have a, we have a vine shield, so we have a hope. Uh, it depends on like how many lance charges we end up eating and like how quickly. Like, yeah, they get wrapped up. You know, that's the thing about yeah. I mean, this is why vine shields are so so popular because most of the province defense is you know just humans or other stuff that has really low magic resistance, and so like they just can't deal with the the vine shield. Um, as long as you know you have some way to deal with the occasional chip damage, you know, and, and a way to reduce you know the damage so that it, it is chip damage you can pretty reliably take on pretty large numbers of province defense our guy isn't even really that killy uh, that's the other thing usually that you want to do is make him decently killy or give him fear or something so the pd will run away anyway yeah so thugs uh vine shields and i'm sure he definitely came away with it <laughs> okay yeah so that's nice uh, we do appreciate Aryu donating a few vine shields for us. They are really good items. I can just never really seem... They're so expensive for uh, nature gems. I don't know. Some people... Okay, this is a pain. Uh, I'm not really sure why we're pinging this. I don't even know where this is. Uh, but anyway, we know that there's some, some horse tribe <laughs> defense here. Uh, and then I think we're pinging in Jabalba. This this does make sense. <laughs> this I do remember. Uh, and like, yeah, okay. So Jabalba uh, has a defense set up. Very cool. You know, a bunch of bats going in turn one. Uh, so we're going to have to deal with flyers. Luckily, uh, you know, these bats aren't that good. So we should be able to survive that. I feel like this might not be everything. Um, the mage count looks a little low. There is a mage here, but they might be part of the, the province defense. No. Uh, so yeah, this looks like they're set up uh, for foul vapors, and they are also twice born, so we will see this guy probably immediately again, right? if we end up killing him in this defense, he can participate uh, in the actual storming. Uh, so that's cool. And then, yeah, a group of sacreds back here, like obviously all us down to it, so this, this is what they're able to muster. Although, like I said, a bit suspiciously low in terms of the mage count, so, you know, they might be saving uh, some stuff for inside the fort. Right, and uh, Asphodel's Lightning, uh, we lose a Lion Tribe Witch Doctor, we'll never recover, <laughs> so we had 11 units wounded, 14 units were killed, I mean honestly like, we probably can't even really tell the difference in terms of like all the units that we have that are diseased and dying, <laughs> so it's kind of like eh. Uh, but again, we're not deep in Asphodel's uh, Dominion, so this does ramp up like once you go deeper into Heavy Dominion, so I do need to be careful about dismissing it entirely. And of course, like, you never know, right, when some, it's, it's like some critical mage that gets blasted. So, you know, it, it, it does grind on and it is a problem, definitely. Uh, speaking of problems, <laughs> old age plagues us. But I mean, like, I don't know, again, we're getting to, uh, anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a tough life out there. Hopefully we'll close this out in the not too distant future uh, for our poor suffering units. A uh, group of knights, hey, hey, you should be on our side here. Uh, we'll probably lose this problem. Province. Uh, and then we have some hardworking farmers. That's much preferred. 
Uh, and then, yeah, there's an abundance of rules. We lose some tax, we ban some free thinkers. This is Marignan, after all. Uh, Eru gets attacked by some barbarians, uh, but it looks like, yeah, this is not province defense. So this is perhaps like some retreats uh, from that army that we scattered. Oh, and the knights managed to hit uh, one of our armies. <laughs> they managed to kill one of our uh, paladins, which is a bit sad. Uh, but otherwise, the losses are not too heavy. Although I wonder if we, do we use gems? That'd be sad if we use gems. <laughs> that would probably be the largest loss. Surely we would not use gems for this. Yeah, wooden warriors, that's not scripted. Okay, so you know, we lost one of our uh, anti-super combatant measures, but we didn't lose any gems. Uh, we also did not get attacked by Yis, so that's definitely in the good news department. Uh, they may still be preparing. We did catch a bunch of scouts. Wow, I'm assuming these are scouts. Yeah, let's see, a scout. I'm not sure where this is. Well, I think this is near Jabalba, actually. Uh, and then a scout from Asphodel. I'm not sure where this is either. Uh, Vanheim scout, lots of scouts. Uh, Yisian scout, a flagrant <laughs> scout. So, yeah. That's actually, I think a lot of those were near Flegra because uh, we had an army kind of patrolling there. Uh, and then, yeah, the fortification on Tianchi is unharmed. This is not surprising because there's only one diseased Grand Master uh, keeping that siege in order. Uh, so we will have to send him reinforcements. Uh, we cure an affliction. Hooray! Uh, we have some patrolling, and then our mercenaries leave us, at least the ones that survived, and one of our liches were formed, so that's nice. And yeah, I'll catch you guys after the cut. All right. This is the situation and what we did about it. I'm recording this from the future. We'll endeavor to avoid spoilers. I guess first things first, uh, our medium commitment army uh, on top of this uh, Asphodel fort, it's been completely smashed. Definitely should have had uh, some more anti-super combatant stuff, even though it is only medium commitment. Definitely worth protecting at least a little bit against something like this. So definitely a mistake on, on my part. And now we're scrambling a little bit, doing a lot of troop recruitment down here. We were already worried about Yis, so we were already doing troop recruitment in Bandar Log, uh, but now that has definitely been increased. Uh, and of course, we're recruiting assassins over here since we're expecting, you know, one or more of these forts might get locked down. Uh, related to that, I guess we should talk about the forging. We are at least getting a bottle of water, uh, living water this turn. Uh, we have a decent amount of water gems, and yeah, water gem income is actually not bad. So in a lot of ways, it's really more the bottleneck uh, is our lack of water mages. Uh, but we should be able to get enough bottles of water that it'll make life, you know, a little more annoying for people to uh, siege our forts, depending on who they are. You know, we're not going to be able to assassinate, right, a thug that just took out uh, that army. Uh, at least not with our human assassins with, you know, just a bottle of water. But, you know, he's not going to be able to siege down the fort, which means other commanders will come along. Whether or not we want to risk our water bottle assassins, if that thug is indeed in that stack, like, we'll see. Because, uh, of course, it is random which commander gets targeted. So it's always a little risky if you're trying to assassinate into a stack where you know there's somebody that's going to kick your assassin's butt. Uh, but yeah, definitely on the defensive for the moment uh, against Asphodel, though we do have an army down here that is somewhat reduced and is also somewhat diseased, uh, but, you know, it, it's moving over, or at least a chunk of it's moving over, and we have another army behind it that's not quite in as bad shape, though we do have a friar here who's sneaking away with a great sort of sharpness and two communion slave matrices, right? So obviously there have been casualties. It looks like he's bringing them back to a lab. Uh, but I do think we have enough stuff here that we can at least, you know, worry Asphodel. It's unlikely that he's going to be able to press home a siege, but we'll see. Our attack against Shinayama continues. Looks like, yeah, we have Tianchi locked down. We are going to be going after the capital here, Shinayama. Uh, we have two forces next door. We're going to use uh, this relatively, I think most of our armies are fairly diseased at this point, if I'm recalling. But anyway, this diseased army, which is still pretty impressive, right, until about half of it dies from disease. Like, this is going to be really dangerous. Uh, so we're going to be trying to lock down Shinayama's capital and probably trying to take it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, also we're trying to lock down, again, we're trying to take Shinayama out. Uh, so we're trying to lock down all of their infrastructure. We have another group of disease units. We're bringing a werewolf in as well, just because also uh, he'll provide at least some leadership. And, of course, like this guy is getting close to death and he's the only leader. Uh, it doesn't really look like there's much in this fort, so we should be able to uh, siege that down and take that, hopefully, before everyone <laughs> dies of disease. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, and then, you know, we have this army here, which was also threatening the capital, but is now going to move over and really just kind of sweep out the rest of these provinces. And 
you know, just provide a secondary force because, again, the thrones are really what we care most about. So, sure, taking Shinayama would be nice, but really this throne is a lot more important. And what we're sending at the throne is kind of cobbled together. Like, it's not, you know, really, yeah, we, ha we have some stuff, but <laughs> it's one of our less impressive armies. Uh, luckily, it looks like this is more or less empty. Shinayama has been using those army size modification items a lot. And, like, this is one of the things that can happen. Pretty unlikely that he's got 90 witches here, which are an independent mage. So he's probably only got, you know, one fort, I'm assuming probably this location, that they can be recruited out of. Uh, and, like, yeah, this is the downside. If you have more mages than units, uh, then it's going to, like, duplicate all the mages in the scout report and make it pretty clear that you're using an... Uh, army item size so there may be a few others running around right we've seen Shinayama use them before but I do think this kind of highlights the issues of using them I do think they have a place um, but also in a lot of ways like you can't 100% rely on them because you might scare some people for a while but if somebody decides to attack and then they and then they see it's like oh wow okay they, they really don't have anything uh, so definitely somewhat of a paper shield to be using those items so I do think our army can handle this but, you know, it doesn't hurt, right? I mean, there are other, <laughs> there are other armies out there uh, that are very real and could absolutely hammer uh, our force here. So, like, we'll see what Agartha chooses to do. But, you know, if they realize, like, how close we might be to winning the game, you know, and, I mean, everybody's always interested in thrones. Uh, and they'll certainly be trying to recapture these provinces from air use. So I think sending another one of our armies over in this direction is definitely warranted. Uh, otherwise, against Shinayama, a few other raids, uh, but nothing too exciting. Uh, we are more or less still just gathering our strength against Aryu. I think, what are we sending forward here? Yeah, just a couple of uh, swarm counter raiders, really, trying to catch. I'm not sure what we're trying to catch here. Because uh, we don't have a ton of province defense, but, you know, I mean, swarm is a good spell. Not sure it's going to be able to stop something like this, uh, but, you know, we, we send him out. You know, we might actually just be trying to rid ourselves. Yeah, like these enchantresses aren't super useful, so if they die in defense of a province, like that's kind of not the end of the world because they are pretty high upkeep. And, you know, for a split path mage like this, like they're really useful for forging, but like we kind of already have, you know, some, yeah, we have paths like that. So, eh, you know, could we get them over there to do even more forging? Maybe like, could we afford that gem wise? Eh. Uh, so that's probably what that's about. But for the most part, uh, just trying to like gather units in here. We still don't really have an army here, uh, but we're starting to collect like enough stuff to look a little dangerous. Still a little light in terms of knights, I would say. Um, but a lot of flagellants, which is nice. No crossbowmen, which, yeah, makes sense <laughs> going up against Aryu. Pretty trivial uh, for them to shut down crossbows. Uh, of course, our friars like are active. Yeah, we got some people preaching. That's a scout. Yeah, we are sneaking some more friars forward. I think we have, yeah, the uh, stone idol. Yeah, which is a heretic. So we're trying to bring that forward uh, to reduce dominion uh, on our path to this throne. Uh, we'll hopefully be ready uh, to move against Aryu in this throne in this area uh, sooner rather than later. And then, of course, there is uh, Jabalba. So, you know, we're fairly concerned. I've got to imagine that... Uh, one of their first war goals, or at least one of my first war goals, if I was them, would be to, you know, grab the fortification that's in their cap circle. Uh, and they have a lot of stuff in their capital. So we are patrolling here with a lot of stuff and we are moving up our reinforcements. So hopefully we'll catch them in a battle here. But if we don't, then we're going to go ahead and send this against Jabalba. We really need to get rid of Jabalba so that we're ready to fight Yes. Also, on an unrelated note, uh, Burden of Time is really quite painful for Marignon. A lot of our disease problems come from the leprosy spell, uh, but a lot of them also just come from the fact that, you know, we're a bunch of old fire wizards and we have Burden of Time rolling. So, you know, a lot for our more valuable mages, uh, we're actually casting this uh, Pyre of Catharsis, which will remove disease uh, from a unit, but <laughs> they do need to have very high uh, fire resistance. You know, they basically take a fire bath. Uh, and they definitely can die. Uh, so this is, I think, only five gems, but still, you know, to do it for a lot of mages is pretty expensive. So we're not doing it a ton, but for like an Astral 3 Grandmaster, I think it is worth it. Uh, so we have a little bit of that going on. Not a lot of recruitment up here. Again, we, we are pretty worried about our Asphodel border, but, you know, something to be concerned about. Like, we don't really control this throne all that effectively. We do at least finally have our Dominion in here. 
um, right? But with a pretty large almost Almish stack that's not that far away. So, you know, that's another thing that we potentially may, after we handle Jabalba, assuming that all goes swimmingly, uh, we might want to send that army over to this throne location to defend it because, again, we don't have a non-aggression pact with Ulm. You know, they're pretty busy with Asphodel right now, but that could shift. Uh, and then we have this army, and yeah, we're not really doing anything about the Flegra situation. They seem pretty content to just continue to build up an absolutely stupendous number of units uh, in their capital. They're still not AI. Uh, we're happy to leave them in there, so we're just hanging out, preaching, you know, researching all that good stuff. Like, yeah, this army is fairly strong maybe could take this um but you know we do see there's a good amount of stuff here from asphodel like yeah not really willing to risk this and you know we've talked about how we don't really need flagra's capital uh, i think that covers the majority of what we're up to we are forging uh some gear let's see yeah the smasher and the lead shield right so we're going to send in yeah i think he's right here this guy so he's got a lot of his kit ready uh, to try to take on that throne, but we're, you know, getting some more of his kit ready, and then that's going to be the guy that we're going to try to use to take out this uh, Watcher throne. Uh, also of note, we are bringing in, I believe, our first vampire. I uh, could be mistaken on that. Certainly one of our uh, earlier vampires, and, you know, once we get, yeah, probably our first vampire, because once we get our first vampire up, that's the nice thing about vampires, or vampire lords, they can summon in more vampire lords. So assuming you have the blood slaves to support it, which we don't really, right, we're not, I, I don't, I'm not really interested in this run to, you know, blood hunt our lands to oblivion. That's not really what I'm trying to do here with Marignan, more of a late age Marignan thing. Uh, but if you were to do so, you can amass quite a few vampire lords very quickly. Uh, but we're just going to get a couple, right, because they are pretty useful. Uh, in terms of what other people are up to, I think we've covered most of it. Uh, we still don't have great sight on, like, the Asphodel, uh, other Asphodel wars, though it does look like I think things are turning against them at this point. Alm seems to be pressing somewhat deeper, though, again, Asphodel's infrastructure is still more or less fine from what we can tell, at least on the Almish front. Uh, against man man has cracked fascia so like that's pretty important we're trying to get a scout in there to you know witness the storm and then of course you know vanheim sowing a little bit of chaos and confusion here among man's advance in the underwater situation uh you know plagia is down to it yeah their capital is under siege by atlantis has not been cracked yet though so i, I do expect this to be a solid defense they actually have one other fort that is you know not currently under siege, though this might have been evacuated at some point. Also of note, not a whole lot in the way of defense, at least as so far as we can see. Yeah, actually, no, this guy has spirit sights, so if there were any elves here uh, that weren't sneaking, you would see them. So, I mean, there really aren't even any mages. They are starting to build up Yish Yissian militia and Yissian spearmen, which is probably a good choice. The militia and, to a lesser extent, the spearmen are you know pretty effective siege defense right so just cheap guys to hold up the walls that definitely makes sense uh, for a throne fortification so definitely looks like yes is not going to you know ignore defending this throne uh, but it's also not a very impressive defense yet uh, they i don't think they've held it for all that long though let's just check research real quickly uh, yeah we're going for evocation nine probably mostly flames from the sky yeah, there's probably a few other spells here that we can cast. Flamestorm, honestly not super familiar with a lot of these spells. Don't hit level 9 all that often. Uh, with a communion, we probably could call, you know, we could cast a meteor shower. I'm not sure we would want to, uh, but yeah, flames from the sky, the main reason we're going for this. Again, like most of this research is not super pressing. Uh, we're still moving forward at a decent clip despite all of our use of mages. So, you know, I think we'll probably at least get Evocation 9 uh, before the game ends and potentially a few other targets as well. Also depends on, you know, <laughs> how long the game goes. Certainly not inconceivable that we would complete uh, the entire research tree if things grind to a halt. Uh, and I think that more or less covers turn 72.